Hello guys, uh, let's have a quick recap of what we have seen in the past few videos. We had a look at OpenStack and uh, had a demo and we then looked at what is virtualization and uh, uh, after that we had a look at the differences between cloud and virtualization and we also looked at some definitions like SaaS, PaaS uh, to make ourselves more confident on the whole topic of cloud. We have covered most of the topics needed for a basic understanding of OpenStack and cloud computing in general. This one and future videos in the series will be aimed at people who want to understand OpenStack uh, more deeply, who want to understand how OpenStack works on the inside, what it, uh, uh, to understand this beast basically. And in this video, we will be specifically looking at uh, the architecture of OpenStack. So. As you know, OpenStack is a big project and any big project needs to have a proper architecture, a proper plan of how they are uh, going about uh, building things. So, uh, no, OpenStack has a very brilliant archi architecture actually and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's um, important to know about the architecture if you want to uh, understand all the inner workings. So let's look at it. Uh, so basically, OpenStack uh, is divided into logical blocks called projects and each project contains a bunch of code that performs uh, related tasks uh, you know so for example you have Nova, Neutron, Glance, Keystone, Horizon uh, and so many more so as you uh, as I say the names you see that none of the names are actually there on the screen that's because every single project has two names uh, so the compute service compute service project is code named Nova, and the networking project is code named Neutron. The image service project is code named Glance. The identity project is code named Keystone. The dashboard is code named uh, Horizon, and so on. So here only you understand you it's a it's intuitive what each pro project does. So for example, Neutron, the networking project, basically handles all network requirements. So if you say you need a new IP for a virtual machine then Neutron will give you the IP uh, and similarly say identity does all uh, authentication so if you want to log in uh, the you'll uh, the uh, your login credentials are going to go to identity and identity is going to uh, 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 authorize them basically so uh, if you look at uh, Nova Nova handles the creation and life cycle of uh, virtual machines it has drivers for uh, all the like various hypervisors like uh, libvirt, uh, libvirt K KVM, QEMU stack, the KVM basically, and then say Hyper-V, VMware, Gen Server, and and all the different types of hypervisors. Uh, so each project basically does its own job, and uh, after that, uh, if you go to the next uh, part. So the previous slide showed what each project basically does and it showed the project in a nice square block, right? Here you see OpenStack in its full glory. You know, each project, uh, you see what is inside each project, what uh, different components are there. So you can see that it, uh, Nova is not a single simple a simple block. It rather, it itself contains so many complicated uh, uh, code running and you know, communicating and interacting with each other. Now obviously uh, this diagram is too complicated to explain in a single video so we'll, we'll come back uh, again and again to this diagram to explain what's happening in each part. But I gave you this diagram to kind of appreciate the, uh, the level of uh, complicated, like the level of uh, uh, how big OpenStack is basically. So uh, before we come to the key points, I just want to give a quick demo of uh, uh, quick demo not a demo more like you know how can you get more information so if you go to OpenStack website and you go to the software navigator you can see all the projects that are there in OpenStack so I basically talked about I think four or five projects which are the core and Im most important projects but then you have several several more projects which are there so for example we talked about Nova Glance and you know say we talked about uh, Neutron and stuff but as you can see there are many more uh, say freezer it's a backup restore and disaster recovery uh, service and then you have your um, drove which is your database as a service and then you have a uh, Sahara which is a big data processing framework and then you have uh, 
जे वेल इज हीट हाँ हीट वी हैव हीट विच इज अर्केस्ट्रेशन सर्विस दिस इज अगेन एन अमेजिंग सर्विस एंड वील एक्सप्लेन वॉट इट डज इन अ डिफरेंट डे यू हैव सिलोमीटर विच इज मीटरिंग एंड डेटा कलेक्शन सर्विस सो बेसिकली यू कैन मॉनिटर हाउ मच यूज इज सम इज डूइंग हाउ मच स्टोरेज इज समन यूजिंग हाउ मच कंपटिशनल पावर इज समन यूजिंग हाउ मच नेटवर्क बैंड विथ इज समन यूजिंग एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो चार्ज दैम फॉर दैट सो इट्स अ कंप्लीट लूप ऑफ अ वॉट अ वॉट क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग इज एंड यू कैन सी द अदर स्टफ योर सेल्फ इफ यू हैव टाइम एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो सी वॉट द डॉक्यूमेंटेशन इज प्रिटी गुड फॉर ओपन स्टैक सो से यू वॉन्ट टू सी वॉट Uh, hypervisor nova supports so there is a documentation wiki and uh, pages where you can find out so to be frank this uh, documentation as you can see is uh, obsolete uh, as in this particular page is obsolete the the information you might the information in uh, uh, docs source support matrix or dna is uh, supersedes this uh, particular page so i have that also open here but as you can see this is quite complicated to go through so i can just show you the basic idea here that uh how they divided the uh, compute drivers into groups so you have your libvirt qemu kvm uh, uh skvm in one group and this group is like fully supported as you can see here and then you have drivers in others groups other groups which are not uh having that many features like so these four uh they are kind of they have unit tests and gate commits but then the functional testing is provided by an external system so uh i'm not going into that much technical detail here but you can see that the documentation is very well made uh, for open stack so you can always go uh, refer to documentation if you are in a doubt of what is exactly going on and uh, so coming back to our key points what we have covered so far is about uh these things that open stack is divided into logical blocks called projects and you have nova neutron keystone cinder horizon uh, trove uh, so many more and each project runs a piece of uh, runs a piece of code that performs uh, sorry each project runs uh, several pieces of code that perform a related task so each project is about a specific task nova is about compute neutron is about networking keystone is about identity and authentication uh, cinder is about uh, block or object storage i'm not really i think cinder is about block storage i might be my memory is a little bad on that one horizon is your dashboard and functionality of each project can be accessed by outside world through rest api calls now this is a very important point to understand uh if you see here in this uh, slide we have uh, say compute and we said that compute manages uh, the creation and life cycle of vms so if compute wants to create a vm it needs an ip for that vm so it's and we also know that all the networking related tasks are handled by neutron so compute is going to ask neutron to give an ip and neutron is going to give back an ip that's how it is uh, that's a good architecture of doing things so how how to do that so that kind of a communication needs to be created right so that's what this is talking about functionality of each project can be accessed by outside world through rest api calls now not just by the outside world but by uh, each other so each project can communicate with each other as well as the outside world can communicate to each project through rest api calls so uh, that's the idea here and so to understand that we need to know what is rest api calls so we'll have a quick overview of what is rest api call or rest api so we can see here that uh, yeah rest is basically call representational state transfer uh, generally it, it's a architecture of how uh, architecture of a protocol you know how communication has protocol ha uh, it's architecture for a computation communication protocol over the over a network and the the architecture defines some properties and some con constraints for example some constraints are that the the protocol must be stateless and the pro protocol must be cacheable and it should have a client server model uh, but we don't want to go into the theory of things we just want to understand what is the popular uses of this term in popular use when people say rest api 
they usually mean http api so http is one of the most popular and one of the like you know it's more it's, no, how to put it is http is a restful uh, protocol so and http is used all over the internet you know http is used for all of our websites all of our uh, uh, world wide web and uh, it's popular for that reason and it's also popular and it's also useful because of these properties you have uh, it's stateless and it's you know it's a client server model it's cacheable these are all good things to have but coming back to our usage our need of rest api uh, the the most important point about rest is that it it runs over http which is on top of tcp ip so it it is uh, you don't have to do a, write any special code to make it happen everything is already existing because of uh, our networking uh, everything's already existing open stack does not need to write any code to uh, uh, for the creation of rest apis to be speci- to be precise and uh, other important feature is that they are stateless which means that uh, so if say a user is going and asking a keystone to log it log him in so he, the user is giving you his username and password and sending it to keystone asking please log me in so this is a request which uh, which the keystone api takes and the keystone api does not need to know anything it does not need to remember any prior information about the person who is uh, sending the request when the keystone gets a request it processes it processes the request and sends a reply it does not need to remember any prior state of the client and that is what is uh, that is what makes the whole uh, http stateless and that is a important feature to have because if your uh, protocol is stateless it tremendously increases the efficiency of your uh, system so to to give an example of uh, how openstack is running on a rest uh, how uh, like to give a demo of the rest service is running let me log in into the openstack machine which we have and i can show you what services are running on what ports so say i go su- uh, sudo net stat i can plan so this is going to uh, give me the list of uh, services listening on various ports so you can see that there are a lot of services running so you can see some su- python services running here some python services running here and some more running you know uh, here so all these python services are basically uh, components of openstack so say this 5000 and this uh, 35357 though they are not python services uh, you can see that they are listed here as apache 2 but they are actually python services so this 5000 and 35357 are actually keystone they are the authentication uh, service running so you can literally send a, a request to 5000 port saying uh, giving your username and your password and a login request and it will log you in and give you back a token and that that's all uh, that's what you do always and say all these are running different services i don't remember exactly what the different ports are for uh so one of the one of them is going to be for neutron i think 9191 is neutron uh there's also one for glance one for uh, keystone and the keystone we all discussed there'll be one for nova and stuff but the idea is the same that they're all uh, plain old uh, rest api which communicate with each other and this design is extremely good because say uh, right now in my system i have uh, if i say uh if i just log in into openstack quickly and then i say open stack service list it's going to give me the services running on my system and i have probably nova keystone glance neutron and horizon running see i am running neutron keystone nova and glance i am running four services in my uh, uh, my open stack uh, cloud so say tomorrow i want to go and uh, add some more projects i want to add uh, i want to add cilometer i want to charge users for the amount of uh, uh, data they used so i want to install cilometer what i have to do is i'll install uh, where is it i'll install cilometer 
and i'll go to celometers configuration file and then tell that okay hey keystone is uh, running on 5000 and say newton is running on 9191 and nova is running on that port and it works so keys uh, so once uh, uh, celometer knows what port the remaining services are running in and the remaining services know what port celometer is running in open stack just starts working uh, like here uh, the celometer becomes part of my open stack uh, cloud and that that uh, provides lot of flexibility lot of scalability i don't uh, the developers don't have to worry too much about things working together as long as the api is compatible things will work so which allows the teams the say the nova team to work independently from the keystone team so that's that's a uh, that's the uh, that's why the open stack architecture is a very nice architecture according to me at least so we'll end this video now but before leaving we'll have a quick uh, kind of a flow of how a particular request goes through open stack say i want to create a new vm and this is a request i'm giving and how does open stack handle this request on the inside what all services are uh, working behind and how are they working to give me my virtual machine so let's just see that quickly so this is like a uh, diagram which shows me how things work so i am ragu and i want to connect to open stack and i do so through horizon horizon is my dashboard whatever uh, communication i do i go to the dashboard and i make a few clicks and i am able to communicate with all the services so i say i want a vm running ubuntu and i am saying it to horizon but horizon is passing it on to nova and nova is the brain of open stack not only does it handle the a uh, life cycle of virtual machine it also handles all the requests coming from the user it's the brain of open stack uh, to say uh, and so nova gets the request but nova does not know who is giving the request so nova asks keystone who's uh, who's that guy and then keystone replies back with uh, the, with the information you know because keystone has the user databases so it goes and checks the database and finds out that it's ragu and it's okay that uh, it's okay because we know ragu you know he's uh, a user of our uh, he's a user of open stack and kishan also says that ragu has the permission to create virtual machines so then now nova knows that ragu has the permission to create virtual machine so it goes to neutron and gets a ip for uh, creating that vm so neutron gives back the ip it says 172.16.101.151 and then now nova has a Uh, ip so it goes and it needs a ubuntu iso so it goes to glance and ask for a ubuntu 14.04 image and glance gives back an image and then nova finally goes to the host which is the uh, hypervisor on which you're going to install your ubuntu vm and it actually installs the ubuntu vm uh, through the help of kvm or some other hypervisor and then once you do that you have your vm up and running So Nova sends back the credentials of the VM to Ragu and says, "Here you go, have fun." And all the communication you are seeing here happens through simple uh, HTTP requests. You know they are nothing complicated. They are uh, uh, they are standard uh, simple uh, calls made by each other to each other, and uh, they don't block as well. You know, so obviously they don't block. But so that's also a good thing and. as a whole this architecture of open stack is a very nice architecture uh, so that you have flexibility and scalability and your teams are able to work independently on project as long as the api is well defined and uh, that's the end of this video and in future we'll be looking at like i said uh, towards this picture in more detail this image is going to be like our uh, uh, we are going to come back to it again and again and again and uh, throughout this uh, series i'll also be learning a lot more for example in this image i have a very f- little idea of what each and everything refers i don't know what what complicated things are going on inside in nova for example this is completely uh, i'm completely clueless about nova so we well, let's learn through the series and uh, bye have a nice day